In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and set up the WooCommerce plugin, which is the first step to selling products through your website, and we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish more tutorials for you. And with that out of the way, we're going to start setting up WooCommerce. Now this is the first step. Installing the plugin is the first step to selling products through your website. There's a lot of add-ons, a lot of stuff going on with WooCommerce. And this video, if you haven't noticed yet, is also part of a playlist where I walk you through all the most important stuff to get your WooCommerce set up and get you selling, including getting your products in there, getting your shipping figured out, your taxes, getting your payment gateways in there, and getting your first customers. So this is part of a big playlist and I encourage you to watch through all the videos. If they're not there yet, this playlist is being released over time. So if you find a video isn't there yet, it will be there in the future. But enough about that. Let's get into this tutorial and set up WooCommerce. I'll see you in the screen capture. First thing to do is install the WooCommerce plugin. To do that, we log into our WordPress dashboard, then we head over to plugins and then add new. In the search bar, we're gonna type in WooCommerce. And this very first one we see here is the one we want to install. There are a lot of different add-ons. Don't get distracted by those just yet. First, we have to install and configure the base plugin. And that's this one up here by Automatic, which is, or who are the people who develop WordPress. Uh, they bought out the WooCommerce company to add it to their own repertoire of plugins. Neither here nor there, I want to click install to get it installed. So click right here. After clicking activate, we're taken directly to this configuration wizard. You can either do none of it by clicking not right now, or as we go through these steps, which only take a few minutes to do, you can skip specific ones. Ones you want to skip for now, maybe do them later or never do them at all. But we're going to walk through all of them right now so you know what's going on. So we click on let's go to get started. On this first page, we're told that WooCommerce needs specific pages, the shop page, the cart page, checkup page, and the my account page. Now you can take the ones that WooCommerce will install for you and click continue to do that. Or if you want to create your own using WooCommerce shortcodes, you would click skip this step and then create those pages yourself. I'm going to click on continue so WooCommerce creates them for me. The next step is the store locale, which is where you're located. So the first option here, you type in the country where you are. For me, Canada, British Columbia. You want to choose the, the country and the state, which is going to be important for tax purposes later on. You can choose which currency you want to run your, your store in. There's a lot to choose from. If you do not find your currency in this list, click on this link. There's some documentation on how to add a currency yourself, but most of the major ones you're gonna find in this list. And then which units do you wanna use? If your country works in metric, these are autofilled as metric. If I select, for example, United States, Alabama, these are now in pounds and inches. So even if you are in the United States and you're using the empirical system, you can still list things as kilograms and meters if you want to. So no matter which country you're in, you can choose whatever you want for your units. I'm going to set my location back to Canada, click on continue, and again you can skip this step if you don't want to fill this out right now. Next step is shipping and tax. Now this only applies to people who are going to be shipping goods. There's a lot of people who want to sell just digital products, in which case you don't want to be shipping anything, so you'd uncheck the yes, I'll be shipping things. But you may still be charging tax. And whether or not you charge tax will depend on your local laws, so I encourage you to either contact the government agency responsible for that, or an accountant or a bookkeeper. They'll help you figure out what your sales tax is, what the process is. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be shipping products and I'm going to be charging sales tax. When you check this box, you saw this big drop down here. So this section right here is very important. You choose whether you will be listing prices on your site with tax included or with tax excluded. Meaning, if you've put up an item for $5 and you have tax inclusive, that means that tax is already in that $5. So if you don't want that, if you want tax to be calculated on top of the price of the product, you want to choose, I will enter prices exclusive of tax. And then down below, we see our tax table for the various provinces in my country. In your country, you will see something else if there's a tax table in the plugin. And these can also be edited later. 
So if your accountant says, oh, well, in British Columbia, you got to charge 5% GST, but you also have to do the 7% PST, which is actually down here, the last, last row. Uh, you can add things later on. I'll show you where to do that in a different video, but you can definitely add different tax rates and update your tax tables. I'm going to click on continue because I'm done with that section. Next up is accepting payment. This, of course, is one of the most important things and probably the core reason you want to have an e-commerce store. You want to get paid. There's two main ways. First, PayPal by Braintree and Stripe. PayPal by Braintree allows you to accept credit cards or regular payments through a PayPal account. Stripe allows credit cards. You also can choose PayPal standard. You can choose offline payments, which are the last three here, checks, bank transfers, cash on delivery. So you choose the ones that are most appropriate to you and you check the box beside them, whichever ones you want. Under PayPal standard, of course, you have this little drop down. You got to add in your PayPal email address. That is not it. I'm actually going to check that right now. And you can also change these later. So whatever you choose here isn't set in stone. You can change them later in the WooCommerce settings. I'm going to click on continue to carry on. And you also have to enter for PayPal and Stripe. You have to enter all the access keys and all the security authentication for those payment gateways, which you also do in the settings. So now after clicking continue on the payment section, we are now ready to rock and roll. So the last question here is, do you want to allow commerce to anonymously collect data about your store? That way they can improve their plugin. It's anonymous, so they're not going to know specific information about your store and say how many sales you make and who your customers are, but they will know maybe how many products you use and how often a single product sells versus a variable product. Just general nonsense of information about your store. So you can click on allow or no thanks, it's up to you. And now we're all done. Click on here to create your first product. Click on one of these to go through documentation. I'm gonna click on create my first product right here. And it takes us to the create first product page. And I've got a different video that walks you through specific types of products. Cause there's a simple product, group product, external affiliate product, variable product. And each of those has a bunch of different options. So I'll walk you through in a different video. I just wanna show you what else you get with the standard WooCommerce plugin. If you head back to the dashboard, and somewhere on this dashboard, for me, it's like at the very bottom, we have recent WooCommerce reviews meta box and a WooCommerce status box, where we see orders, products, net revenue. And we can move these around by clicking and dragging. You probably wanna have this near the top because you wanna see what's going on in your store. So you can click and drag those. Uh, something else you get when you install the WooCommerce plugin, you get the WooCommerce menu item here on the left. You also get the products, which is where you add products. Under the WooCommerce, I was saying earlier you can update your taxes and your payment gateways in here. If you click on the settings link and head over to the tax tab, we can update our tax information here. Click on the standard rates tab. We can update the specific rates for specific areas. So we have all the information here that was listed on that page in the walkthrough and we can make updates to it here. Now that you have the WooCommerce plugin installed, I suggest you check out the other videos in this playlist because that's where you'll learn how to do some more specifics in the settings as well as add products, add payment gateways, and start selling your products online. So that's how we set up WooCommerce. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And like I said, this is part of a playlist, so there's gonna be more videos here. If they're, if they're not released already, they will be in the near future. And if you haven't done so yet, hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish more tutorials for you. And next up is clicking one of these videos on the right hand side or continuing on in this playlist and getting even better at WordPress. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.